In this video, Dr. Rita Hummel provides a broad overview of the design and installation of the Washington State University Riparian Buffer Demonstration Landscape along a section of Clarks Creek in Puyallup. My interest in this landscape was to provide a visual demonstration of an attractive, people-friendly landscape that's also friendly to the stream health and the inhabitants of the stream. As we travel through this instructional video, we'll take a look at the key steps involved in creating our streamside demonstration landscape. We're using about 110 linear feet of our property on Clarks Creek. First step in starting any project is to do a site inventory. What plants were down there on the site? We had a lot of invasive blackberry we had to get rid of. We also found snowberries and we found a gorgeous large Pacific nine bark that we could save. There's also an Oregon ash on the site that became part of our design. So we preserved the good plants. We got rid of the invasive plants. Next, we were able to move on to the design phase. We created a design that is beneficial for stream health, but attractive and functional for the property owner. It provides an outdoor living space for the resident with sweeping views of the water, at the same time shading the stream and controlling erosion. And among the parameters we wanted to see in the design were a pathway for access to the site, as well as an infiltration trench. And we decided to place the infiltration trench in the pathway. This gave us an area to actually infiltrate water so that the water wasn't running across the surface and into the creek, but actually going into the soil. Once we had our design, we were ready to begin the installation. An installation began with putting a wattle along the periphery of the area to be planted and this will keep soil from going into the stream or washing into the stream. We could go ahead and start really getting down to creating the landscape by installing the plants. That's the fun stuff. The site was planted with a mix of Pacific Northwest natives and adapted ornamental plants. Proper planting techniques are absolutely essential to the long-term success of your landscape. Let's take a look at these techniques step by step. One of the things that we want to do before we put things in the ground is make sure that the root ball is nice and moist. One quick way to do that is to have a barrel of water on site and simply dunk your plant in the water. Hold it there for a few seconds. If the plant is real dry, you may see air bubbles coming up. And in that case, you'd wait until the air bubbles quit. So this is a nice plant, good root development. What you want to do before you plant it is to disrupt those roots so they don't continue to circle. Before you plant it, cut that and spread it. We wanted the planting hole to be deep enough so that the plant, when it was placed in the planting hole, is at or slightly above the level it was grown at at the nursery. That's its relationship to the grade. We recommend backfilling with the native soil. We don't recommend adding peat moss or amendments to the planting hole. Uh, if you have reasonably good soil, if the plant's going to be successful, it has to root out into the native soil. You never want to stomp a plant into the ground break roots, over compact the soil. That's not a good practice. Another key you want to do is you want to mulch the plant. And when you mulch, you're looking at adding three to four inches of bark or wood chips. A lot of different materials can be used for mulch. We're using wood chips here. So you don't want your mulch right up around the stem uh, because you don't want to encourage water to potentially sit there. Or in some areas, uh, you can have rodents that like to hang out in the mulch, especially in winter, and uh, kind of gnaw on the stems. So hold your mulch back. Remember, there is no such thing as no maintenance. One of the reasons we mulch is for weed control, and it helps a great deal, but it doesn't eliminate the need for weeding. Remember, weeds are easy to pull from mulch, and smaller weeds are easier to pull. So be vigilant. 
check for weeds periodically and pull them when they are little. In our climate, we have very dry summers, so you're going to need to do some follow-up watering, especially during the first two seasons after transplanting. Then sit back and enjoy your restored streamside landscape.